Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. If you've been around for a while, you know that I used to put out a series of videos called Five Must Have Pool Shots. But now I'm going to give you guys the shot of the week. So this is gonna be volume one of the shot of the week. And the first one we're gonna work on is my favorite cut shot, my favorite angle, which is this just about 45 degree angle that we're looking at. And I'll tell you why I love this. Because if you have this in your game, you can get a lot of places on the table. Here's our object ball that we're headed to. Could be the eight, that could be the one, we're going to the two, it doesn't matter. We're going to get there with this shot. And you can put this, as I'm gonna show you later in the video, anywhere on the table. And guess who can get there? You can, just about anywhere on the table, you can get there using the tools that you're gonna learn on this shot. So what are we gonna do here? First off, I would recommend you get over here and see the shot. This is a good habit all the time, even if the shot's relatively automatic for you. Second, I'm gonna be moving that ball around a little bit. As I show you these different shots, the cue ball, the object ball, they're not gonna be in the exact same spot. I'm not gonna be putting them on reinforcements. That's just silly. So we're not gonna have the exact same spot over and over again, because in the real world, you don't get to shoot the exact same shot over and over again, so I really shouldn't get to do it in the video. This is how we play it. We play it with high right. We throw this ball into the pocket, we come off of two rails, come down here, we're gonna hit very close to this diamond and have a shot on the black ball, which is in one of the worst spots to get position, which is the short rail. So our shot looks like this. We come off our rail, we're about a half a diamond off of where I target it, and we have a perfect shot on this black ball. Now, I'm gonna give you another sample of what you can do with this shot. I have been shooting this shot religiously. I, sh I hunt out this angle. And I saw it the other day, Jason Shaw, playing Earl Strickland, took this shot. Jason had to go in the side pocket. And guess what he did? Our exact same shot. So, come down on here. Again, if you wanna come over here and see the angle, very good habit, especially for you um, beginner and intermediate players, but you will see the best players in the world go over there and take a look at that shot. You come back here, same shot, guys. Guess where we're gonna be? <laughs> we're gonna be perfect for the eight in the side. As I said, a lot of places you can put this ball. Why are we on this side of the table? Well, I don't want you or myself to be that pool player that can go around the table with right-hand English, but can't go around the table with left-hand English. So while you're practicing and learning this shot, make sure you move on the left side and the right side because in the real world, we're not always gonna to get to go in the direction that we favor. Actually, this is my favorite side to shoot this from for whatever reason, I'm not even sure. But the other thing you can do with this shot other than get position on a ball is to break up clusters. How easy is it? We know, once you learn this angle, we know you're coming pretty close to hitting this diamond, right? I do it almost every time with this exact angle. Balls might be a little off left or right. You'll develop a knack actually for how much top and how much draw and how much left or right to put on this ball to get to different spots. That I can't teach you. You have to pick it up from shooting it over and over again, just like a lot of other shots. But I know it's coming pretty close to this cluster. So if I shoot this, this time with high left, and I go around the table, I should come pretty close to breaking up this cluster. And that's about as close as you can get. So we didn't get perfect shape on either one of these balls, but because it is an illustration, you get the point. This is not shot four. This is shot four to shot 40. Because when you understand this concept, it opens an entire world for you. You are gonna pick up about 40 different position plays from this, just understanding this. 
we already know that if our cluster is here next to our favorite diamond and we shoot our exact same shot, that we can come in here and break it up. What happens if the balls are in space and we need to break them up? Well, it's very simple and very powerful. If we're headed to this diamond, we are probably on track to break those up, right? It's logical. We don't have to do the math. We know, hey, I'm headed to my favorite diamond. Those balls are in the way. I'm going to hit them. What happens though, if the cluster is here and you have the exact same shot? Well, there's two things. And this is where it starts to get really powerful. If we're gonna hit our favorite diamond here and we come in this way, we have a chance to come off of this rail and break up a cluster. Logical, right? We also have an opportunity to get lower on the table. So down this end, closer to the pocket, if our cut is more severe, okay? Best way to think about this, best way to remember it is, <laughs> Severe brings you closer to scratching. Severe cut. That's our regular cut. That's our severe cut. So watch what happens. This time, instead of coming to our favorite diamond, we will come towards the pocket, which is where our balls happen to be. Much lower, we break up our cluster. Now, Let's take another look at it. Just so you get a sense of this, we'll make it even more severe. Once again, break up our cluster. Remember our first shot? First shot, we came off of three rails and we got here for this ball. We came off three rails, we got off of here, and we got on this ball. What happens if this ball is over here? Well, the shot gets more difficult, but it just illustrates all the different things we can do with this angle. Instead of putting running English on it, what if I cut off the angle, instead of helping it around the table, would be reverse it, so it's going counter to the direction that physics wants to take it, is that physics? I guess it is, and straightening it all out. So the shot looks like this. This is the same shot with high left. Everything got straightened out. We didn't go around the table, came straight up and down the table, and guess what? We got a little too straight. <laughs> this is the last ball. But um, I think most of you would take this shot and be very happy with it. I know I would. So that shot had inside English. Now, what do you need to know? Because this is important. First off, I know very well that I make these shots look a little too easy. And I apologize. I've got about a 30 year head start on a lot of you, maybe more than 30. I like to say 30 so you guys don't know exactly how old I am. So number one, they're not as easy as I make them look. I just have a lot of experience shooting them. Like I said, it's one of my favorite shots, right? If you have a standard deflection cue and you're shooting from the distance that I am, you need to find a way to adjust for squirt, throw, deflection, all that sweet stuff that low deflection cues prevent you from having to adjust to as much. We still have to adjust for throw, it's still there, but you don't have to adjust for deflection nearly as much. So understand, the distance that I'm shooting this shot requires a higher level of skill than if you shot it with the balls just three feet apart, okay? So we're on a nine foot table, we're shooting them about seven feet down table with English the whole way that shot is more difficult. You need to make the shot easy. How do I tell you guys every week to do this? You put your object ball there and you start here and you move your way back until you're shooting them from all the way down here. 
That's the only way you're going to get good at it, guys. And make sure you're working from one side to the other. Don't just be the person that can shoot it on the right side or the left side. Second thing, the last shot had inside English on it. Inside makes this shot a lot more difficult because everything that this ball wants to do to help you make it in that pocket, adjusting for cut and deuce throw, rolling around the table, all of those things are negated. It's, you're going the opposite of what makes the shot easy. Now I talked earlier about how you can use this shot to get just about anywhere on the table. Let me explain what that means. Our object ball that we're heading to is here. What if our object ball was there? Can we still get to it? Of course we can. We shoot the exact same shot and we put less speed on it. So instead of coming off of three rails, we come off of two. What if our object ball was there? Can we get to it? Of course we can. We come off of three rails and now we have the shot here. There's only a couple spots where this shot is very difficult to get to. And that's pretty much something that looks like that. Because where beginners think you can hold up that cue ball, <laughs> you can hold it up, but you have to sacrifice making that three ball in, it in order to do it. So if I shoot this and I scrub off, all the English, and I just tap it in. I can hold up for that ball. So keep in mind though, if I have a greater angle, I'm gonna have greater speed, I'm not gonna be able to hold it up. But understand that you can stop this ball anywhere around the table that you want. You can change the angle with inside English. You can do a lot of different things. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out this video next because this is going to give you some new shots that you might not be aware of. And I look forward to giving you guys a new video every week. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you being here. Here's our shot in fast motion.